So I do want to talk a little bit about uh, what he kept referring to as modulating intensity for the average person so they understand what that was. And I try to explain a little bit by how we use our mobility sessions and trigger sessions. That's really what that is. Well, yeah. I mean, everything you said was very reasonable, right? Yeah. So intensity is, refers to the, how hard something is, I guess, to, to put it in layman's terms. And intensity needs to be appropriate, right? So if it's the right intensity for your body, your body will progress. If it's too little intensity, you're not going to get any adaptations. There's no reason. And if it's too much intensity, your body can't adapt. It always is worrying about recovering. And that's that's a pitfall that a lot of fitness enthusiasts fall into because mm -hmm. we love exercise so much. We have a higher tolerance for hard workouts because it's something that we enjoy. So we tend to overdo things, which can cause inflammation and pain and, and stuff like that. So that's what he's talking about, that he was overdoing it. And what he had to do was scale back to get his body to, to feel right. better. Boom. What's up, everybody? Here's what we're going to give away today. MAPS hit. High intensity interval training done the right way includes uh, mobility sessions, flow sessions, which actually make the hit far more effective. And you'll hear in this episode, we talk a little bit about it by addressing some of the false crap that the media puts out. Poor guy. Got some wrong information out there. We, we got him on the show to clarify. So we know you're enjoying this episode and there's more to come. Um, also, we're running a sale this month. The RGB bundle is 50% off. So that includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, plus some more free stuff. So that's half off. We also have an individual MAPS program on sale, MAPS Suspension. This is a suspension trainer program. So all you need is a suspension trainer, and you can train your entire body. That's also 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code JULY50 for the discount. All right, here comes the show. Nathaniel, uh, so I got to tell you how I kind of heard about you, um, and uh, I'd love to for you to kind of explain the whole deal with it. But uh, we have a group text that we do with our with each other, and Adam sends a link, and it's a picture of you, and you're kind of like running, but on your hands and feet. And he goes, uh -huh. "This is really crazy. We should probably talk to this guy." And I'm like, "What's going on here? What's the deal with it?" I would love for you to explain how you got kind of this. This this viral notoriety um, around you running like a dog, and in the articles it would say things like it solved a lot of your pain issues, and it was uh, a good workout. Obviously, it looks kind of strange. So, tell us a little bit about that and how that happened. Yeah. So, uh, like first off, um, running like a dog is not any part of what I do. Um, I don't have any sort of animal inspirations or influences or anything like that. In fact. Um, up until those tabloid articles came out, that wasn't even a comparison that I really buddy made. So it kind of like put that into the cultural zeitgeist before that nobody made that comparison really. Um, and then I did, um, an interview, uh, for an article and then it kind of, they, they just put that spin on it. And then wow. after that, well, wow. media I, never does that. <laughs> That's strange. I, um, referenced me uh was really referencing those those headlines so <clears throat> there's really no dog relation and there's really not any, it's not really about running uh on all fours at all uh my all fours practice is uh just a way to int uh, intuitively modulate intensity using all four limbs so it can be you know it can be running on a bear crawl but it can also be um, you know, any, anything where I'm, I'm using my arms or my legs to modulate the intensity for the other set of limbs. Um, so it's, it's, uh, developing better coordination and a better, um, ability to, to be able to use my body for, for modulating intensity for the most part. Okay. What, so this is really strange. Okay. So, um, you're just talking about crawling patterns. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you sound like you're a trainer, you know what you're doing. So I'd like for you to go into your background, but before that, um, I want to comment on how strange this is. So, because the articles literally talk all about running like a dog and it's a picture of you on your hands and feet and it looks very strange. And you're saying that's like nothing that has very little or nothing to do with what you teach and what you do. So literally the media took this and without, you know, no pun intended, ran with it and created this narrative to get clicks. Is that, am I being accurate here? Spot on. That's a hundred percent it. So... Yeah, they, uh, they, they decided to put that spin on it for some reason. I'm not really sure why, because whenever they reached out to me, I was already at, you know, 900 plus thousand followers. Uh, my page was, you know, already established. Um, and anybody that, you know, followed me regularly knew that that's not what my, my, uh, my bit is. Um, and so they, they, I had a viral video 
Um, it had like over 20 million views and it was showing me working on, um, on, on running. Right. But that's, that was just like a day, you know, I, I experiment with all sorts of different types of movement. Um, and that was something that I had sort of played around with a little bit in the past and I had people kind of requesting it. And so I did that. Um, but it, it's, it's not even, I wouldn't even consider it a, a very, a small fraction of what I, of what my all force practice includes. And it's definitely not the defining feature of it. Um, but yeah, they decided that that would be, I guess, a good spin to throw on it. So I was uh, on vacation when those articles came out and, um, I, I started getting texts from people like, Hey, you're, you're on daily mail, you're on TMZ. So I opened them up and I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, this is, <laughs> this is insane. So I was like, whose ass needs kicked right now? Um, but, uh, it turned out that, you know, um, that that's, that's just what they thought that would uh, sell. So, um, since then I've been kind of trying to steer the narrative back towards what it was originally, which is, uh, alleviating pain, building better, uh, strength conditioning and mobility, and basically, um, developing this, this, uh, style of training and these principles that allow me to be able to progress my other physical disciplines. So this is, this is the reason why I reached out is because this is what I started to like, look you up and try and find all your other pages. And this is what I was telling the guys. Like I saw the article, I saw the way they were painting the picture, but I said, I bet you this guy is actually a pretty smart trainer and knows what he's doing. We have, we talk about flow. We have flow in our programs and we've, uh, and I think Justin's practiced animal flow for a while and we've incorporated in some of our training. And so I said, I bet he's probably a smart, educated trainer who's probably doing this a little bit out of his day every day. And they took that, that narrative and ran with it to try and get the clicks. Turned into dog man. And so that's actually the reason why I want to talk to you. So go back to the original question Sal was talking about. Give us a little bit of your background on uh, how you got into animal flow and why you started doing that. What type of pain were you you having? How did it help it? Like, I, I want to know your story more. Yeah, so um, I've been a trainer for, you know, nearly 10 years now. And um, I uh, have several different physical disciplines, a lot of different practices, jujitsu, calisthenics. Um, and I, I really... Uh, a big fan of exploring lots of different disciplines. But the problem was that I was having a lot of wrist pain and shoulder pain um, from, from trying to have too many disciplines at the same time. And so basically like one by one, I was starting to kind of give them up. And I realized that um, the problem was that I was doing too much high intensity work and I wasn't doing enough to supplement that. Um, so I, I tried a lot of uh, mobility routines, like every, every type of, uh, program for bulletproofing and none of them were really working for me. Uh, I think that the lifestyle that I was living, I couldn't devote all of my, just one or two things. And so, um, I realized that I needed to change the ratio of the amount of time I was spending on my hands, but it had to be under a lower intensity. Otherwise it wasn't going to work. Um, and so I decided to start with, uh, planks originally, and so I started with planks and I would do that for maybe like one or two minutes a day. And I realized that the low intensity work was helping to resolve a lot of my wrist pain, uh, by basically reeling everything back a whole lot. Um, and then the bear crawl and the, the all four, like walking on all fours, that is just the, the progression past plank for me. It was adding in the moving elements. Um, so although that's the title of my series is walking on all fours, uh, that's not really the essence of what an all four, my all fours practice is. Um, it's, it's about modulating intensity because I knew that if I was going to be spending any fixed amount of time on my hands throughout the day, I needed to have some sort of mechanism to modulate that intensity at a moment's notice and to any degree that I needed. So that would be, you know, all the way back to next to no weight on my hands. Um, and so I realized that from a bear crawl position, you can shift pretty much hundred percent of your body weight forward into your hands, but you can also shift pretty much hundred percent of your body weight back to your feet. And you can decide in that moment, how much intensity, uh, is appropriate for, for where you are in that moment. So Nathaniel, you, you sound extremely reasonable. Um, and like, you know what you're talking about and what I'm, I'm blown away right now because of how much the media spun, um, that article and create now you already had a business that was built. You said he had nine, almost a million followers on social media 
Have you yeah. taken this, has this hurt or helped your business? Or are you having trouble trying to take it and turn it into something positive? Because you're probably getting a lot of attention right now and it's the wrong kind of attention or maybe with the wrong uh, ideas of what you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would like to spin this into something positive. Um, but to be honest, it hasn't really had a huge impact on what I was already doing. So my page is journal of my daily practice. Uh, so I didn't um, see a big surge in people coming to my page. I also didn't see a lot of like people leaving my page. Uh, everything kind of just held where it was. Um, the amount of growth basically since I've started, I've averaged like growing like 3k a day on my page. So that didn't really change. Um, I don't think that it had a huge impact on it, especially because all of these articles that are mentioning me and then all of the um, different media companies that are sort of um, uh, using this for their, for their uh, follow-up pieces, uh, they're not really tagging my socials too much. So Nathaniel Nolan isn't the same as XP Movement, which is uh, my, my socials and then XP LLC, which is my, my company. Uh, so I haven't really seen a big impact, any uh, direction on that other than uh, people reaching out to me like you guys. Have you, has your attitudes towards media changed at all after this? Did you, were you like, did you think they were crap before and now you're just like, oh yeah, there it is. Or did this surprise you? And <laughs> cause if this happened to me, I'd be like, oh my God, I didn't realize they were that. I knew they were bad, but holy cow, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So I was super nervous about it before I uh, gave the interview originally for that tabloid article. And uh, I was like, you know, I, I, I know that they could spin this. I didn't know it was going to get spun in this direction just because this is so far off the beaten path. This is so far <laughs> yeah. what I do and what I've been compared to and everything. So I had no uh, idea, but you know, I had, I had an idea that, you know, they, they would, they would do uh, whatever they wanted with it. And I know that at the end of the day, it's, it's about the bottom line for them. They give a shit about me. So um, yeah, uh, I, I don't think I'm, any more disillusioned. I maybe like, uh, there's a couple different, uh, media sources that I now kind of have beef with, I guess, personally, but, uh, I'm just going to try to let it roll off my back because, um, you know, I, I can't really impact what's already happened. I can't take that stuff back in. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm trying to kind of steer the narrative more towards reality. So, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it impact me too much, but yeah, I, I definitely knew that they were, um, big companies are, are generally not looking out for the people that they're trying to exploit. No, not at all. And, uh, you know, you being in fitness for, for over 10 years, uh, this it's, I mean, if we compare it to fitness media or popular mainstream fitness and health media, I guess it's par for the course. Cause if you've been doing this for 10 years, I'm sure you constantly have to battle just garbage information for people that you're trying to help all the time when it comes to diet and exercise. So I guess it's uh, along the same lines, right? Right. And so that was my biggest uh, fear was that the wrong message would get out, that misinformation would get out. Um, and I've been kind of struggling with that since I started just because uh, TikTok in general tends to be sort of a, a tabloid of, in, of itself. Um, so <clears throat> things kind of get a little momentum and then it's, it's hard to, it's hard to rein that in. Um, so whenever I started my series, I was like, right, I really want people to understand that it's not about doing bear crawl every day. Um, it's about, about being able to modulate intensity. It's about, uh, consistent exposure. Uh, it's about these principles that I'm developing, but I also understand that I'm not going to be able to, to, uh, give everybody that same, that same glimpse. So my hope is just that if people, uh, have some interest in me, they stick around long enough. They're going to, they're going to get the picture. Nathaniel, tell me a little bit more about your journey into becoming a trainer. Like take me back, take what, what led you down the path to become a personal trainer? Uh, what direction did you go education wise? When did the, when did this all come together for you? Yeah. So, um, Training was sort of a, a hobby of mine since I was a kid. Uh, I, I grew up on a street. There were like no kids. Uh, my grandparents were my only neighbors. Uh, so I, I basically had my, my body as my, my first gaming console. I used that to, to entertain myself, like learning, learning uh, different skills and, and uh, watching a lot of Dragon Ball Z growing up. So I'm repping the shirt right now. Mm. Uh, and and uh, wanting to to be able to 
um, express myself differently as well as being able to, to develop um, in any, any direction. Um, so I started training earlier. Uh, I, I wrestled in school and then uh, I started jujitsu when I was like 20 or 21. And I was working as a photographer at the time, ended up hating that. And I decided like, okay, I actually really like training. I'm going to I'm going to uh, try to pursue that as a career. So I just went ahead and got a certification through ACSM, which when you're, when you're getting any sort of cert like that, or even a degree in, in that field, a lot of times, like you're learning all the textbook stuff, but you don't really like learn how to do the job until you're like doing the job. Um, and so uh, I uh, started working in studios, but I realized that like, that it wasn't a great, it wasn't a perfect fit for me. There was something missing. And so uh, I tried to start developing kind of my own training modalities, but also uh, looking a lot to social media influencers for, uh, for guidance and for inspiration, because these, there were a lot of people kind of setting this new frontier of being able to try all of these disciplines or try new disciplines um, that were kind of outside what you would learn in a, in a textbook or in a classroom setting. So um, that's whenever I started kind of blending a lot of my disciplines, but it wasn't until I started my all fours practice that I really was able to unify all of them. So that's been pretty recently that I've actually had success uh, blending all of my uh, disciplines in a way that it actually works for me where I can perform them pain-free and uh, without feeling overwhelmed. So what's your, um, what do you, what's your business now? Do you train people personally or is it, it all online? Uh, so before, before the quarantine, I was training people one-on-one -on -one in person. And then when that happened, I was like, Oh shit, I'm out of the job. Um, so that's whenever I started doing online training and I, and I found out I actually really enjoy online coaching in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Um, and so that, now I do kind of a, a mix of both now that people are able to see each other again. Hmm. Which one of those tabloids are the worst ones that you, you said you had some beef? Do you want to, you want to call them out a little bit? Which ones are the ones that spun it the most and just made up the most crap? New York post. Oh, wow. You don't say. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have like, honestly, when the, when I saw them talking about it on TMZ, I was like, Oh fuck. Um, but they weren't that bad. It was New York post was like making up a bunch of puns. And the worst thing was that they were putting a lot of, uh, phrases in quotes as if I had said them. And there were things that were like very far from any sentiment that I had ever expressed before. Like what? Wow. Uh, that like the, the headline, the headline on, uh, I think it's been repeated on a couple different, um, a couple different articles, but, uh, Indiana trainer says he got crazy ripped from, uh, from <laughs> oh, yeah. running like a <laughs> running like a dog. I, crazy Doug just pulled it up pulled right it up. now. I'm a personal trainer. And running like a dog made me crazy rip. You know what? Right. You know what? I would never dumb shit like <laughs> so. Awesomely clickbaity. Yeah, I also eat like a dog. Yeah. You know this. With the, you're a good boy, by the way, Nathan. You know what? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah, what's Squirrel. Fun, you know what's sad about this is that there's a certain percentage of people that are going to do this now because they think it's going to make them ripped. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's what. But uh, maybe it'll bring them to my page. Maybe they'll, uh, they'll, they'll learn a little something in the long run. To hopefully they don't get hurt in the process. Yeah. I think the big lesson here with, uh, with all of this, because look, I, I've, look, we've all been in fitness for over well over two decades. Um, so we've been doing this for a long time. And I know a reasonable trainer when I talk to one. Within five to ten minutes, you sound like a very reasonable trainer, experienced, like you know what you're talking about. You haven't said a single thing that I would say, oh, that's not right, or I counter that. Again, like I said, you sound very reasonable. It's so opposite from how you were painted in these tabloids. I think the lesson here I feel like is I, that media I, is just garbage. I feel like I knew that. I feel like You I did knew. because you did your research. Yeah, and these guys were like, they they saw the tabloid and were like, why are we bringing this guy on? I said, right. I bet you he actually knows what the fuck he's doing. I mean, we talk about uh, modulating intensity all the time. In fact, we have what are called trigger sessions, mobility sessions, and we try and teach our audience that, you know, uh, I, I mean, as, a, as a trainer, all of us have been trainers for over, over 20 years. And we we apply we over applied intensity for most of our career, thinking that more is better. 
And teaching people how to do that is so important. And so we've built these real low intensity type of exercises, very similar to what you're doing, right? So we have these, what are called mobility sessions, which is just body weight movement, a lot of animal flow type stuff that's built into it, or what we call trigger sessions, which are these real light rubber band workouts that are 10 minutes long. And it's really to facilitate recovery and do exactly mm -hmm. what you're kind of doing. So I, I knew that as a trainer, you probably came to the same conclusion that we did, that we were over applying intensity in all these different modalities and stuff that we were training both ourselves and clients. And then later on found out, wow, our results would be accelerated if we actually peeled back and included these other practices. So I kind of knew that. And I, that's why I wanted to bring you on here to be able to tell your side of the story. Cause I had a feeling that the way this was being promoted wasn't truly how you were incorporating. And I thought, you know what? I think what he's doing is something that I would do. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad that we had you come on and talk about it and tell your side because, yeah, it definitely didn't come off that way in the tabloids, and you do sound like you know what you're doing. Yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off here, Nathaniel, to our audience? Yeah. I mean, um, I guess if people want to know like what I really do, um, I, I do a voiceover in every single one of my videos. So although it is a journal, um, it's, it's meant to sort of provide insights for what I, for what I'm trying to accomplish in my own practice. Um, so, you know, check out my page XP movement, um, on, on TikTok, um, and then I also just dropped my Patreon yesterday. So, um, I'm providing some more like exclusive content that's going to be more geared towards coaching instead of just giving people insight into my journals. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I just just basically trying to get people um, geared towards what I'm actually doing instead of what these headlines are kind of portraying me as. Excellent, I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. And again, I think the big the big <laughs> lesson here is the media is really full of shit half the time. It's terrible Yeah, how they painted you. Yeah. And like I said, talking to you after five minutes, I'm like, oh my God, this is completely, completely wrong. So appreciate you coming on, man. Cool. All right, man. Right on. Thanks, Nathaniel. Yep. Nice talking to you, bro. Yep. Good talking to you guys. Part of me is blown away and part of me not surprised. So the part of me that's blown away is because I fell for it. I didn't do what you did. I didn't go on his page. <laughs> yeah. I didn't read his stuff. I didn't do any research. I just trusted you, obviously, because I do. Mm -hmm. But the tabloids made me think, oh, gosh, it's one of these ridiculous. Here's another gimmicky thing. Yeah, like, dude, like, you know, pretend fitness person and yeah. whatever. And I was there. I was kind of there. So to hear him talk, I, literally. After no, I remember minutes, the look you gave me when we, we got back from vacation. You're shame like, on me, man. You're like, yeah. who? Okay, Adam, you need to explain to me who this guy is and why we're having him on our show as if it was going to be this massive waste of time. And I thought, you know, and I didn't go that deep into his stuff, but I went deep enough to know that. It wasn't like this guy was running around. He was spent. He was spending at best a half hour to an hour a day, you know, doing a practice like this. And I thought, uh, how many clients of mine, including myself, would benefit from doing animal flow yeah. one hour of their day? Yeah. I have people bear crawl all the time. It's right. so funny that they spun that like it's something you pick up at the grocery store with like Bat Boy and Chupacabra. And yeah, like, you know, like, like that's what it whole the whole thing sounded like that to me. Uh, but yeah, he's just incorporating this in his programming, uh, just that little amount to be able to strengthen his wrists and solve a problem. And yeah. I know Sal wrapped it up, but I, I want so now that we're having a, a little bit of time to discuss it, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, what he kept referring to as modulating intensity for the average person, so they understand what that was. And I try to explain a little bit by how we use our mobility sessions and trigger sessions. That's really what that is. Well, yeah. I mean, everything you said was very reasonable, right? Yeah. So intensity is, refers to the, how hard something is, I guess, to, to put it in layman's terms. And intensity needs to be appropriate, right? So if it's the right intensity for your body, your body will progress. If it's too little intensity, you're not going to get any adaptations. There's no reason. And if it's too much intensity, your body can't adapt. It always is worrying about recovering. And that's that's a pitfall that a lot of fitness enthusiasts fall into because mm -hmm. we love exercise so much. We have a higher tolerance for hard workouts because it's something that we enjoy. So we tend to overdo things, which can cause inflammation and pain and, and stuff like that. And so that's what he's talking about, that he was overdoing it. And what he had to do was scale back to get his body to, to feel right. better. And you know, moving on on all fours or bear crawl, it's just, it's one form of of movement that can solve certain issues. It's not the movement. It's not yeah. the answer. There's a whole, like, it would be like me saying, you know, there's one exercise that you need to do and that's it. That's not true, right? You want to do a, a variety of movements. So again, he was totally reasonable. Yeah, this points to like the importance of practice too and like getting your body really good at something. And so to be able to modulate intensity allows you to, to frequently practice um, you know, these types of stimulus for 
what was definitely needed for him with with strength and support around his uh, wrists. And so uh, to be able to do that, it just makes a whole lot of sense to then back off a bit of the intensity so we're not like overdoing it to where it's setting you back. Well, what totally came to mind for me, and, the, and this is why, and I'm, I'm glad we're here, and that what I wanted to bring up, but this is uh, what inspired us to create the flow sessions in MAPS HIT. Yeah. Right. Is we understood exactly. the the way people apply hit training, the amount of intensity. We knew we had to modulate that intensity somehow, force our audience to do that. So they're not just doing hit, 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 hit all yeah. the time. And do and our flows kind of look like an animal flow. There's designed mm -hmm. to do these mobility moves uh from one to the other without breaking a stride. And right. it's very similar to doing like a bear crawl or moving on for and what I love about like uh the animal flow stuff is the what what it does for wrist and ankle mobility which tend to be areas that people neglect mm -hmm. when and and don't realize that some of their their chronic pain they're dealing with is stemming from one of those two areas yeah we yeah were, well, i mean in prime pro so we have like these beast positions already established and that, that like half of that you really have to pay attention to the intent and the cues there like what he's talking about with uh loading your your legs and and alleviating some of that pressure on the wrists you know you have that ability to do that while also still applying pressure so you can have less Less pressure you can apply more pressure and you could gradually sort of increase that amount of pressure once your wrist gets stronger supported yeah but you know really again i want to keep going back to this it's like when you when we talk to the average person and we ask them information about diet uh or exercise 90 something percent of what comes out of the mouth that they heard or read is not just wrong it's made up or opposite this highlights that this because yeah. there's a lot of people. I'm, I'm telling you right now that article. I guarantee you, there's a chunk of people yeah. that are like, I want to know more about this secret way to get ripped. Yeah. Just like when they read about you know the cabbage juice diet or you know uh, you know new fat burning compound found in chocolate shown to accelerate fat loss. Well, not only that, but somebody will take, oh wow, he does the animal flow thing for one hour a day. I want to get more rips, so I'll apply even more. Yeah. And now they're gonna be running around like a dog three, four hours a day thinking they're going to get shredded by doing that. Uh, exactly. And it's like, this is what we're constantly <laughs> battling. And so, oh, you, you know what this highlights to me? It goes right back onto the consumer. Us as consumers, and I'm sorry, when I say us, I'm talking about everybody, right? Uh, us as consumers of, of information, when you're trying to improve your health and fitness, you got to take it with a grain of salt. You really do. And you have to be smart and do your research and don't just take a headline or what they say as truth. You got, and, and I hate to say this because I wish you could just go and be like, yes, I trust that. That mm -hmm. makes it. That's not at all what they care about. You think the New York Post gave a shit? about giving people anything that's helpful. This is just a new angle. It's a new thing. Like people always respond to some kind of new hack or new thing that's going to get you ripped or or you know lose a bunch of body fat because it, it just it seems so new and novel and it's like, "Wow, I didn't even think of doing that." And it's like the total it's totally like uh, misinformed. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? So let's say he didn't have almost a million followers. Let's say he was a new trainer and that came out. And let's say he didn't have a lot of integrity. You know what he could do is he'd be like, "Oh, I'm going to capitalize on this. I'm going to write a book yeah. on running like a dog." Well, I think and why I, I put on a dog costume. I think lean which is perpetuated. I you know? think that happens more often than not. So do I. I think a lot of times people are just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall, and, and I mean, I'm guilty of this when I first started Instagram, trying to figure out what works. And you know, some people get lucky, and something goes viral, and that's where you get what you get known for. And it and it's tough to not make a business mm -hmm. out of that because right. that's what most your traffic coming in is wanting to know more about. And so I bet you a lot of people that are on social media that have massive followings fall into that exact trap. Lucky for him, he had already built a exactly le a legitimate yeah. following from good information, so that when this tablet and you look at it, it didn't even give him any more money or traction really. No. It's like that just shows you like it, it didn't bunch of crazy attention. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I knew I had a feeling. I mean, I, I wanted him. I wish he would have went a little bit more into his education experience um, because I, I felt like uh, he didn't really go deep into that. How what led him down this this pathway of like where, where did the chronic pain come from? Mm -hmm. You know, how did he learn why modulating intensity was so important? Like there's a lot of things. Though, and even how he started off with an isometric first and then progressed right. into. Yeah, it was a yeah. plank, right? Yeah, yeah, he started off with it, which was smart, right? Makes he started a, a way a way to modulate. We talk about that. That's so great about isometrics all the time. It's a great way to increase volume and without increasing too much intensity or doing too much damage. To the body very safe right very safe very smart way to do that then he progressed it into like a flow which 
I think was also really smart. So, you know, I don't know if he just hasn't had the opportunity to communicate it the right way to enough people or what, but I could tell that he obviously knew what he was doing by going that direction. Yeah, I think, you know, the the old wisdom, the old uh, like line, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. That's just true. It just really is. When it comes to fitness and health, if you read like the secret thing that burns hella fat or do this one exercise or look at this new diet, this new, it's, it's going to be crap. It's mm-hmm. not going to be true. You know, this new compound they found in red wine, if they attach something to a, a, a you know, some kind of a vice, yeah. you know, it's probably not good because here's what happens. If I say red wine's got a compound that makes you live longer, well, all the people that love wine are going to love that oh. article and they're going to want to keep drinking the red wine, right? All the people that like that read the article about chocolate, they're going to want to keep doing that. You know, it's, we have to be very careful and I hate, you know, I hate to keep hammering this, but it's like, there are no short, there are, there's yeah. no shortcuts. And these, these media outlets, which have so much power, I mean, th- that New York post and all these tablets, he went viral. He reached more people than we, we can with a podcast or a show yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Why? Because it's, it's, you know, it's, and again, it's us consuming it, right? We click on it because it looks so crazy and wild. Right. It's a, it's a, I don't know. It's a terrible state to be in, but boy, you got to really pay attention. And um, there, there's yeah. no shortcuts. I'm gonna, I'm stuff. gonna do a whole Sasquatch program. Ah! We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I, I mean, for our audience that has our programs and follows our stuff, I just want to highlight that one of the things I notice that people tend to do is they skip um, the mobility, the trigger, uh, the flow sessions in the programming because they think it's like ah whatever. I know. And I just want uh, our audience that follows our programs to understand the importance of of that when it comes to that. So if you suffer from chronic pain, you're noticing you're hitting plateaus and you're not doing those those sessions that we build in there, this mm-hmm. is a perfect example. Here's somebody who on, on a co- total different pl- path into different stuff came to the same conclusion that – he was overtraining his his body and he needed to pull back one of the ways and didn't pull back doesn't necessarily mean stay home and rest and do nothing. Mm-hmm. There's things right. that you can do to facilitate recovery and continue to progress and then also still be moving and burning calories and being healthy. Your body recovers better and it heals better when you move for the most part. Now there's extreme cases where that's not the case. You're really sick or you're really injured. But for the most part, if you need to speed up your recovery, um, get your body to adapt a little better, one of the best things you could do is move a little bit. It's just to move, move a little bit, go for a walk, uh, you know, crawling on the floor. Like, why is that such a good, well, it's just using your body differently. Really, if we really break it down to the benefits, just using your body differently, stretching, mobility, you recover faster and better that way than if you just sat and waited for things to happen because your body will adapt in any direction. And one of the signals that you send when you're not doing anything is for your body to become weaker, for your body not to recover quite as quickly because you're not doing anything. There's no reason for your body to adapt if you're just sitting there not doing anything. How do I incorporate cardio and not lose muscle? I've seen people do this before where they'll start to lose the sharpness of their muscles or they'll start to lose the sculpt a little bit and that's disheartening. But if you do it right, then you minimize that muscle loss or that metabolism slowdown. In fact, if you do it right, you can actually speed up your metabolism at the same time that you build stamina and endurance. You just have to be able to kind of program it properly. And the way to program it improperly is just to go do as much cardio as you can for as long as you can. Right.